All right, so let's start going over these dreams. All right, universal language of the mind. Top five most common dreams. Number one, running or hiding from something being chased. So one thing to bring it back to the beginning, everything in the dream is about you, an aspect of your consciousness. So one very simple thing to remember as you go through learning this language and interpreting your dreams. If you ever come across a symbol and you don't know what it is, or if the symbol itself, you don't really know what it is. You know, if you're running from something, you don't know where you're running from, you just know you're running. Just remember, everything is an aspect of your own consciousness. So you can replace every symbol with the word me, I. You know, I was running from myself. <laughs> I was being chased by, I was chasing myself. I was hiding from myself. You know, but it's a part of your consciousness. So I was hiding from a part of myself. I was being chased by a part of myself. I was running, I'm running from a part of myself. You know, every, and not just this kind of dream, but every dream, you know, you can, you can do that with. Place it, play, replace it with you and it'll really help. So, um, some, so this dream would be something within you that you're unwilling to face. Very common dream. So one thing that I would suggest for someone who's having this dream, because, you know, yes, we are learning how to interpret dreams, but we have to apply the message. You know, it's it's fascinating to experience a dream. It's, you know, you know, it's very exciting and insightful to interpret a dream. However, if you don't apply the message, then, you know, there was really no benefit of it all. You know, like I say all the time, if we're sitting in a building and a group of people run in and say, hey, the building's on fire, the building's on fire, and, and then they run out, and we all just sit there, oh, hey, y'all, the building's on fire. And then we just stay sitting there, then, you know, they shouldn't have even stopped for us. They had no need to even stop for us and have that experience. They could have kept on going. So we didn't do nothing with the message. But now, oh, the building's on fire? Let's get up. Like, okay, we need to get up. We need to formulate a plan and get out of this building or or put out the fire, one of the two, you know, something. We need, to, we need to change what we're doing. So applying the message is very important. So for someone who have, who's having this dream, what I would suggest is really look at what parts of yourself you're not willing to admit are really there. Like, for example, me, you know, I'm a Taurus bull. I used to be so bullheaded. <laughs> I mean, I still am in a lot of ways, but very confrontational and, and stubborn and, um, you know, really just very confrontational. But I would always blame it on the other. For example, you know, I've always been very, like, cheery and joyful and, and funny and, you know, making, you know, trying to make people laugh and enjoy life. But at times, you know, I would be very aggressive if the situation, I felt the situation called for it. I was very confrontational. And, but I would always blame whatever person or thing within my environment that stimulated me to be that way. Um, you know, it was, they made me like this. I'm not like that. You know, so I was, I was running from that part of myself. I wasn't willing to admit it. I was hiding from that, you know, it, and, but it, but it, sometimes it would be chasing me because it would, it would haunt me, you know, like being chased from something. It's like something that's haunting you. It would haunt me. Because because I, the control of how I my my state of mind and my emotional state of, uh, emotional state and things and the experiences I had were in the control of other people. You know, other people could easily just walk up, hey, Rock, you're a bitch, and then boom, they they were in control of my emotion. Oh, you gonna prove that to me? And and here we are, I'm having this whole experience that I wouldn't have had. Whereas now, you know, somebody comes up to me and says that, I'm just going to laugh because it's it's hilarious. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to, you know, I don't have anything to prove. But, uh, mainly because I've done a lot of dream work. Honestly, I did a lot of dream work with that and uh, changed that part of myself. I used to have dreams where people would you know, run up and be shooting at me all the time, all the time. But once I started this, and once I became aware that I was like that, exactly how I explained, this, I, I became, this awareness came as I first started writing down my dreams. Then I started within a couple of weeks, I started having dreams, you know, because I was also meditating every day, concentrating every day, visualizing every day. So I, but I started having dreams all the time of like, I, I remember the very first one where it switched. I turned the corner and there were three guys there. Hold, one, was, one in the middle was holding the gun. They were all laughing. And I've had a dream, a dream very similar to this all the time. <laughs> and they shot me three times, boom, 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 right in the chest. But this time it was different. I looked down. I was completely fine. I laughed, snatched the gun from them, and shot all three of them. So, you know, we haven't gone over this yet, but death in a dream represents transformation. So since everything is a part of you, it's all about self-transformation. So that's a way in which 
the the way that I was changing and evolving wasn't in the I didn't feel like it was in the hands of someone else. I took control of who I was going to change and evolve into. And first thing I'm going to change are these parts of myself that are very aggressive and you know haunting me. So then I did, and I, I haven't I haven't been the same way since.